What is up, my little day in all swips? It's the Yoko of the House of the and I'm here for my draft analysis for the low tier format that Ogalbina will be hosting. And uh, thankfully, I was able to be part of it this season. The course lineup you can find down below in the description. And now let's just go through my team that I drafted. I'm gonna be trying to go it very briefly. Kinda utilize the fact that even though I'm going quote unquote pick by pick, there's a certain like synergy that I want to like uh, cover why I select certain Pokemon together instead of like telling you what one Pokemon does because I'm sure by now uh, uh, even in a generation 9 we start to kind of recognize what even the newer Pokemon can and cannot do so let's just jump into this we're gonna be starting with the one that was on the thumbnail that was the round one pick which is going to be my Terra Captain for this season which is Armarus. The Terra Captain see how it works this season is that every team get to declare one Terra Captain that is uh, in a limit of 12 points or below highest value and was it uh, covered by Ogalbina necessary to be like okay this Pokemon even below 12 points cannot be uh, named as a Terra Captain there are a few exceptions but Armarus did not fall into that and I was like you know what if this one is there for me in round one I'm still picking it even if it's not one of the higher tier Pokemon I wanted this to be my Terra Captain because I really I've been looking forward to use this Pokemon in draft league format. I think it's a very cool and very threatening to deal with. And especially the fact that I can use Open Terra, which is going to be in a way utilized in a team preview. I'm not going to explain the team preview too much. You're going to be noticing in the battle videos how that actually works in practice in a Wi-Fi scene compared to Showdown. But having option to uh, openly choose what Terra type I want to be with Armorous seems so appealing so broken and so fun to me that i'm like i cannot skip this opportunity if it's there i'm picking it and then i want to draft around it a psychic search core and those were basically my next two picks which was halucha and indeedy i wanted these three pokemon together because i think it's gonna be a very strong foundation for me to start to build my draft around them and i can already say that from that i can kind of see that all right this is how i can utilize my team to always find a way to win the matchup and now i just have to support it around it either defensively or find more offense around it so this won't be the only way for me to win my matchups then speaking of the utility and some defensive backbone <laughs> pun intended we got mandibus for ourselves because it's gonna be one of the more reliable dark types and crown immunities while getting access to things like knockoff, toxic, U-turn, boost, defog, all the mandibus stuff that it has always got access to, it still gets it in generation 9. So it's a very nice and valuable asset to even have, even in round 4 when I already had a Halucha being picked as a not a flying type. But I didn't want a Halucha to be my sole crown immunity to the team. So having a mandibus that it also is a immune to psychic type attacks that can be strong versus me, when I set up indeed this terrain up, it's nice to be able to cover my own back with this mod. And then I added a Cascodon and Gudra form, uh, form of a defensive backbone as well. That also have nice utility moves that can help me uh, win the matchups. With Cascodon, I get access to Spikes and Stealth Rocks that I learned this generation. With Gudra, it's getting access to Scald, Knockoff. Uh, and Toxic, which are some big uh, new buffs for Gudra that I didn't get access to before. And then it obviously has this wide move pool of coverage. And very hard to take down uh, what I would think in a low tier format. Because there won't be as many hard hitting Pokemon that are going to be faster than it. To pressure Gudra down to the point that it's not going to uh, have as mu much effect. I think in a low tier format, being one of the l very few high tier Pokemon that were left by round 6. I thought this was probably one of my strongest picks that I could have done at that point. And now it's just figuring out some momentum, some a little bit of more offense to the team and covering some uh, fairy weakness. And starting covering something like some of the fairy weakness, I went with Revarum covering my steel typing and poison typing in one, giving me parting, sub, uh, parting shot support for my offense and being able to prevent in a lot easier to things, giving me toxic spikes and toxic as a form of utility. And it's a mod that can utilize shift gear relatively effectively in this format because we are talking about low tier format. So I can utilize it also to be a setup sweeper in right matchups 
if I see opportunity to pull it off. So I like Reva Room for that. I've used it once before in a brief stint in a BFO search last year and I really enjoyed it and I'm happy to I get to use it again. Then we added for some form of speed outside of Halutsa with Inteleon as our one of our picks. It was one of the better high speed Pokemon that were left at this point of the track. We are talking about round eight. So having Inteleon at this point was something like I was like, all right, you fulfill a need that I need to have on the team, but I need to find a way to support this moon really well to deal with bulky water types, because obviously Inteleon is very well known for that. It doesn't get access to something like a grass nut to hit bulky water types that aren't weak to ghost and dark covers that it gets. So I added Rotomo right away after getting Inteleon to make sure I have a strong Volt turn core and nice pairing together with Inteleon to cover the one typing that it cannot really deal with and Rotomo can deal with any water types essentially out there and hit them very hard and super effectively and provide me some ut utility potentially dual screens it gets access to pain split as a form of recovery once again that it wasn't having early this part of the generation but Rotoms thankfully have pain split back not defog yet so I need to cover some uh, uh, remover part and that's where Colossal came in, giving me another fairy resistance besides Revaroom and a flying resist. Since my elected type is not resisting flying with Rotomo, I get access to Rapid Spin as a form of uh, hazard control. We get Stealth Rocks and Spikes besides Gastrodon, which is really nice to add. And I'm, I'm kind of excited to see that how do I like using it. Colossal in a draft league format when it's not a Terra Captain because I really enjoyed it in PPL Season 2 that we uh, end up as our last Wi-Fi draft league where I had Tor uh, Terra Colossal as an option. Here we're gonna be just having a, just a natural rock fire Colossal and I'm excited to see that how I can utilize it and inform my proper opinion of a Pokemon that I was at first a last generation kind of hesitant to draft but this uh, this generation for whatever reason it is I found it a little bit more appealing to me to try, give it a go, try and use it in draft league format. Then the last pick is going to be a little bit of a weird one with a Psychic Shirt Steam, which is going to be a prankster Pokemon like Sableye. But Sableye, the key things that I wanted to add with it was that I can utilize still prankster dual screens with this Pokemon, even if the Psychic Shirt is up by Indeedee. So some prankster moves I can still utilize if they are not targeted at my opponent at the time while the terrain is up. This also gives me a, a spin blocker because some of the teams do only rely on rapid spin instead of defog as a form of uh, hazard control so I can use that as a weapon against them if that's gonna be something I choose to do in a matchup like that. It gives me a fighting immunity that I think was a really important because my poison type does not resist fighting, my flying type one of them being mandibus doesn't resist fighting and one of my psychic types being indeedy doesn't resist fighting. So because of those uh, aspects, how my resistance worked on the team, I figured that I need either fairy type or I need a ghost type. The fairy types that I could have afforded didn't seem that appealing to me. So I said like, you know what, Sableye, I think you can provide more to my team and we are just gonna roll up into this season without having an actual fairy type, which I'm hoping and thinking is not something that you necessarily need to require to have in your traps. There are some typings that are more important in low tier than others when you're doing a normal trap league format and fairy typing. Crossing fingers, I would like to think is not a critical typing if you have other ways to make up for the lack of it on your roster. So that's gonna be the team for this season. Let me know in comment section below what do you think of the draft. It should be popping right about now still as a kind of like a recap over my face cam. Week 1 battle that I'm actually playing in a couple of hours as I'm recording this will be versus Dap. Um, Dapper Snapper, I think is his name. Regardless, I'm gonna be uh, playing my week 1 very soon and you get to see it next week on this channel. The uploads will be always on Saturdays for this season on this channel and for everybody else playing in this season. So until week 1, thank you for watching and I'm gonna be see you guys later.